You're listening to the Cricket Podcast. Hello everyone and welcome to the Cricket Podcast. We have a packed show for you today. We're going to be previewing India v England, the fifth test with it all to play for as India are 3-1 up. Uh, We've got some New Zealand v Australia action. We've got Ireland winning their historic first test. We've got the cum dog taking over at Sunrisers Hyderabad. And we've got a little bit of Women's Premier League action as well, including a car window being smashed. I'm Jack Hope. I'm joined by Max Rowe Brown. How are you doing, Max? Are you excited by the jam packedness of this episode? God, that's quite the um quite the contents page, isn't it? You you take a few few days away after the last test and um yeah, it's all it's all happening. It's great. Looking forward to it. Uh yeah, I am too. I am I I like talking about cricket. That's why I do a cricket podcast. And <laughs> Hopefully, if you're a listener or a viewer, you like watching or listening to the podcast. And hopefully, you've subscribed or followed. If you haven't, here's your opportunity. Get your phone out your pocket, click that button now, and support the pod. If you're a super fan, you can go a step further than that as well. You can tell a friend, spread the word with your mouth, or WhatsApp. WhatsApp some clips over to to your best friend, even if they hate cricket. (laughs) Uh, all, All the views count. And uh, you can support the show directly by going to patreon.com forward slash the cricket pod and signing up from just four pounds a month for some extra content. Max, um, I think we'll start with India v England, won't we? I I was, you know, obviously doing a joke in the in the intro that it was three one and all to play for them. I mean, the series Mm -hmm. is technically dead. Um, I was looking at England's World Test Championship prospects. They're more or less dead as well so in terms of things to to play for we're a little bit light on the ground there but there is there is the question of pride do you think pride will be will be the order of the day in durham Shala this week i don't know about pride i think there's value in you know winning two tests in a series away in india it's the the hardest place to go really isn't it to to go and win a, an away test i mean we were all sat there before the before the series started, expecting England to lose 5-0. It's going to be an absolute job being going to be a disaster. We're going to see England get pasted on on dusty wickets. And it's been a really good series. Nip and tuck. There's been close moments in, in every game, really. England came away with a victory in the first test. The pitches have been good. The cricket's been good. Um, so nothing to play for with the result, but I think it's still going to be a test match that we're all looking forward to seeing. It's at Darren Sharla, so it's going to be really nice to watch because there'll be lovely mountains in the background. Um, hopefully, hopefully no snow. <laughs> it looks, a, no, it looks, it looks like it will be um, April conditions for in- England England cricket in April um, as well. So that looks uh, that that will be to England's favour. But there's there's um, there's enough intrigue. To, Aside from you know the state of the series, just from it from the test match itself, I think like, you don't necessarily have to look at it in the context of the series. Just as a test match, on top of what we've seen so far, it should just be 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 good, be good cricket. So you're telling me that this is going to be good sport for the sake of sport? Yes, it's nice, exactly. It's a nice, exactly. nice yeah. romantic way to look at things in this um, disposable age. The disposable <laughs> era. Like we've got, we've got a true romantic on the show. No, I, I mean, like I, I tend to agree. I, I, I'm quite looking forward to this. Um, I'm looking forward to it for a number of reasons. Uh, as you say, everything that's preceded it has been pretty good. The tests have been competitive. E- even the the you know, the couple of fairly big blowout wins that we we saw in the second and third test, no, they, they were actually competitive games um, for for periods. Like it was, you didn't know at the end of day two that one team was going to run away with it. That that's what happened, but um, it was it was in the balance. It was compelling viewing, and uh, I yeah, that's the that's the kind of test cricket we we all like. Um, I'm also looking forward to the prospect of cricket being played up a mountain yes. in the <laughs> in the winter. Um, I think I think you've I think you sold English weather in April a little bit short here on this one max <laughs> <laughs> no i, I had a look at the forecast it's going to be like low teens later this week in down that's the high point that's the high point yeah it's going down to like three degrees on some days um it's also 
obviously at altitude, so there's the the prospect that a blizzard could could roll in off the Himalayas. Uh, I'm not sure if there is a prospect of that, but in my mind, that's what happens at altitude. Um, the air will be thinner. Um, I don't know whether that will factor into things either. It could do. I know this though, Max. They've relayed the grass since again the, the World Cup, and it does it does look pristine. Like it's so obviously this is a long term project uh, project to to build the most beautiful cricket ground in the world to, to take on Cape Town um, for that for that title. And and we've seen a few false starts. Maybe Max, this will be the time for Durham Charlotte to properly shine on that front. What do you reckon? Yeah, well, I mean, they've got the they've got the um, the natural advantage. I think. I mean, Cape Town's stunning, but there's you know the the Durham Charlotte backdrop and the the pavilion as well. That that whole um, that whole image, that whole like pa- panorama, is possibly the the best site in cricket. Um, it just was a bit let down at the World Cup by all the divots taken out of the ground by anyone's knee when they hit the turf. So it's nice to see it's been relayed. But I mean, I'd st- I'd still be a little nervous because it takes a while for grass to bed in, doesn't it? And it wasn't what was it? Locked up. I mean, we're talking four four and a half months ago that they were playing on it and if they've relayed it since i'm uh, i'm i'm not a groundsman i'm not a landscape gardener but my understanding of how grass works is that it does take a little while for it to get to a stage where you can run around on it without it pulling up so i'd still be a little nervous about what might happen given the fact they relayed it before the world cup and it was a disaster after england was supposed to play there and um, they couldn't because the grass wasn't there. There wasn't any. So I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna All hold eyes out. On grass. I'm not gonna count my chickens. All eyes are on the grass. So, yeah. Well, it makes look, a change from all the eyes being on the dirt. Seven minutes into the podcast, we've talked about grass for four of them and done an introduction. <laughs> um, should we, should we speculate on on what this means for the for the two teams? Um, probably. Probably history would tell you that that these conditions are likely to play towards England's strengths a little bit more than uh, some of the other venues. I, I still mm. think that there will be a home advantage. So I'm, I'm not saying like England are suddenly favourites, but like the 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 feeling probably is that these conditions might make England a little bit more competitive, a little bit closer to fifty percent. What do you reckon? Yeah, well, it, it brings what England's bowling attack has more into play, doesn't it? I mean, supposedly it benefits the fast bowlers, bit of swing, bit of seam. Don't know how the high altitude will will affect things, but if the ball goes a bit faster through the air, then maybe Mark Wood will be bowling at 110 miles an hour instead of 95. <laughs> we can we could dream. So there's there's hope there from England's point of view, but they does it does give them different um questions, doesn't it, about the selection and what they do. There was a little rumbling that Ben Stokes might put be the third seamer for England in in this game, which would be interesting. But you can't help but think that for for all of the benefits it will give England with Anderson Wood, whatever, um, coming up against Bumrah, fresh from arrest, and Mohamed Siraj might take all of that benefit away from England anyway. Like, yeah, India's India's spinners are better than England's spinners, um, but England's spinners have given a good account of themselves in this series. Jasper Bumrah has been by far the best bowler in this series and absolutely destroyed England on pitches that have been quite good to bat on. He's found reverse swing, movement off the seam and run through England. He's got Joe Root so however many times England's, you know, premier batter. If he's back, if he's back in conditions that are, that are actually benefiting fast bowling, then I would be more concerned about what he might do than any advantages England's bowlers might get. I've got yeah. into a pessimistic England fan mode here, but I mean, he's averaging 13 and a half the series. Well, he is quite good. He is quite good. And and that, that point segues us on quite nicely to two selections. So we do know that Boomer will be back in um, or at least available for selection for, for this test, will not be rested. So you would assume he'll come in. Um, Could be I dropped. Siraj, Could be dropped. Sir, Siraj has already missed the test in this series. So you'd think he 
he would be available too. Um, I guess the question is, from an Indian point of view, and we'll start with India, then we'll go on to England because there's a little bit more to talk about. Um, we'll start with India's bowling as well, is whether they whether they go for a third seamer here or whether we'll continue to see Coldeep and Jadeja and Ashwin as a spin trio for this match. Do you have any thoughts on that? Have you, have you got any inklings? Maybe the ball, maybe it'll be too cold for Coldeep to hold the ball. Could be. Yeah. I'd, I, th- I think an extra seamer would be sensible just i mean because india don't have the benefit of that you know all rounder all round seam bowling option do they they've got plenty of that with the with the spinners but they're lacking a bit of that when it comes to the pace bowlers so i think bringing someone in for i mean maybe bringing someone in for cool but cool was so good in that last test it makes it difficult but you're not going to drop ashwin and you're not going to drop Tadeja. ashwin's 100th test so i'd be i'd be leaning towards um another seam option over cool deep in this game. I think that would make sense based on the understanding that Darren Sharla benefits paces, but you, you, you don't want to give Boomer and Suraj too much work to get through, do you? I can kind of, I mean, I can kind of see the argument for that. Like, obviously, you know, this is, we're still recording this podcast a little bit too early to have seen the pitch. And mm-hmm. like, frankly, it's anyone's guess as to how that surface will, will, behave bearing in mind the fact that as we said earlier it is the winter and it is up a mountain when, when i um, checked the forecast for darren charlotte last week it did say there was going to be about 70 millimeters of rain on sunday <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah, well, if you actually, it won't if you, be dry. If you look if you look now it's a mix of sleet and snow for thursday which is the day, day before the test I, I don't know if you've ever seen anyone try and turn the ball out of snow like maybe maybe if a drift develops outside off stump Cold heat will be well in the game. Perfect um, conditions for Akshar to go on to skid on. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, if, if it were me, I would probably stick with Cold heat though. I, I, I hear your arguments. Um, I think, I think without knowing what the surface looks like, yeah, I, I find it difficult to believe that an Indian, that the next best Indian seamer with Mohammed Shami not available is going to offer more than Cold deep, even yeah. in conditions that aren't optimal for Cold deep. Um, he he has, as you said, been really, really good in the series. And, and unless there is something telling you that he will be really ineffective for some reason here, I think you pick him. And I think Ashwin and Jadeja, well, you have to pick. And we'll, and we'll get on to, to Ashwin and his 100th test in a bit because we need to pair that with Bairstow and his 100th test. Um, <laughs> but but like I, I think India's bowling, yeah, it's it, it probably really the reason that they're they're so dominant in this series is that even when we've seen good batting tracks they've they've well you know all the tests but we've seen good batting tracks apart from that one time when ollie pope went nuts they've been able to regularly take wickets and and chip away at england in a way that england haven't been able to do their 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 bowlers Mm. have been a little bit blunter from an england perspective um they i don't know if they've maybe backed themselves into a corner a little bit here because they 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 were quite vocal in their um criticism i think of of ollie robinson and his fitness going into well after immediately after the last test um and i i wonder after having been so vocal whether they can select him which means they they, if they are going to go with three seamers and i'd speculate it's more likely for england because i think you know they drop a spinner it doesn't really matter one of them's gone home anyway um, they would be stuck with Anderson, Wood, and Gus Atkinson, Max. Mm. You know, is that is that what you would expect England to do? Do, do you really? Do we? Anyone? Does anyone really know? Do England know whether that's a good idea? <laughs> I don't. I don't think they do. I think the best. I think their best bet would be Anderson, Wood, and Robinson in in this situation. I think you're right. They have um, caused themselves a bit of an issue. But again. I mean, you said at the start, like, you know, it's, it's kind of a dead rubber and we're enjoying it. We're going to enjoy it for the cricket. But considering the state of the series and the fact that England really aren't going to get anywhere in the World Test Championship, maybe give Gus Atkinson a go. He can hold a bat as well. So, I mean, there's he's got that going for him. So, I mean, you've, he's he's gone there. He's gone round India. He's, 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 got, he's had the trip. Everyone else has got to go. So, um, yeah, maybe, maybe Gus Atkinson will get the nod. For, for that reason, then it would be, you know, wouldn't wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing for England to to blood someone new, but you know, I think you get the impression that he was in there as kind of a a foil for Mark Wood if if 
Mark Wood pulled up with an injury. So whether they're a bit samey is um, uh, a concern. Like who would take the the new ball? Because you know Mark Wood did in the first test, and that was the first time he'd ever done it, and it wasn't a great idea. So I'd, it does cause problems, but I, I don't. Yeah, I, again, like you say, it comes down to the pitch, doesn't it? Um, ben Stokes as the third seamer is also the other the other option, which is where you could see them maybe going down that that route. Because I mean, at the end of the day, even if it you know people talk about Darren Sharma as if it benefits the seamers more, but it is still India. Right, and we know that spin in India is is the way to go in general. That's just the nature of the pitches. So, whether it's going to be beneficial enough that if Ben Stokes can bowl, that you then bother with the third seamer, I think that's possibly going to be where it lands. Ben Stokes's fitness, if he can bowl ten overs in an innings, maybe they won't bother. I think it would be really dumb to bowl Ben Stokes in this test match. Personally. Yeah, it would be. It would be right. questionable. But doesn't mean I don't think it. Be. I mean, I think I think England can kind of go two ways. I, 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 I think, I think they, uh, in a sense, I want to see Gus Atkinson because he's the new thing. Like, yeah. Uh, as a as a, an observer, I, I would like to see Gus Atkinson play, and I would like to see him play some tests in the summer because longer term, England are going to need players, seamers that can replace the old ones that are going to mm-hmm. retire or the unfit ones that aren't all, always available. And, and he yeah. is, he is one of those. Um, you, you, you should also remember on the new toys front though, that um, Sher Bashir was really good in the last test and, and they might want to see another test from him. And if they were to pick three seamers, you would think that probably Bashir would be the one to drop out, which might, might be a little bit harsh and yeah um you know frankly when's the next time he's likely to play a test maybe in pakistan later in the year possibly but you know also you know probably not so they might want one more look at him um in, in conditions that are a little bit more favorable and and i suspect that's the way they go and and i suspect we won't see robinson and i suspect it would be anderson and would and i suspect that we'll see the outcome being quite similar to how that team has got on v india in, in the test series so far they're not going to change the batting are they um india india probably won't change their batting incidentally as well king king legend has gone to see a specialist in, in london i believe mm. um after his injury which means that patadar will probably have one more chance um <laughs> save some face yeah like well, yeah good and good luck to him but the rest of the batting seems to be a bit too much for england um, and, and their team. So, you know, that's my prediction. Max, do you want to do, do, you want to do predictions now? And then we'll talk briefly yeah. about Bairstow and Ashwin's 100. We'll do that after the break and then move on to, to the other cricket after that. So who's going to win this last test in Durham Shala? Yeah, I mean, it feels, feels like India, doesn't it? I, I, can't, I can't get my... I can't square Jasper Brummer's return with England getting getting past it. I think it will be close-ish again. Like England will put up a fight, and there'll be good cricket. I, I, I think, but I, I'm still, I'm still backing India to, to win it. As you, um, as you say, I mean, they're the the guys they brought in in Safraz and um, Drew Jarrell have, have looked well at home against what England can throw that throw at them. So I, yeah, I, I don't, I don't hold out much hope for England, but you never know. Maybe India you don't, on the beach. Yeah. You, you, you don't know. Um, I I mean, yeah, from an India point of view, I mean, we, we, we've been quite England-centric in saying this doesn't really matter. India probably do want to bank the World Test Championship points. Well, yeah, that's true. Because they have to go to Australia later in the year, and that could be you know, that, that could be a difficult tour for them. I'm not saying it will be, but it's probably their hardest tour of the yeah. that they could, they could possibly have. And um, Australia will... Definitely want to make a statement after how the the last the last two of those have gone. Mm. Um, so yeah, I mean, like India are pretty clearly favourites. So I, I don't think the draw is an inconsequential factor in this game, though, because nope. of the the weather and because we don't really know that much about the pitch. Like there there is the possibility that this is a bit dead. Um, I think like a lot of moisture in it. I also 
And I'm going to make one prediction here that's that's quite speculative and you know could could well be wrong, but this is what the podcast is all about. That's what, that's what predictions think, are for. I don't think this ground is going to suit Jesper Brumra. I okay. think, yeah, I think there'll be too much moisture. So if you look at Brumra, um, excellent, excellent bowler, probably the best pace bowler in the world, but particularly thrives on drier pitches when mm. you get a little bit of reverse swing and at, particularly thrives in that period of the game as well not not as an effective not as effective an opening bowler as other opening bowlers in the world but a particularly effective bowler when the ball starts to get old the best bowler by miles when the ball mm. starts to get old um i am going to speculate that we will not see the ball rough up as much here and I'm also going to speculate that the altitude will mean that reverse swing doesn't really come into the game as much. Um, okay. So is that based be... on is that based it's on based... widely uh, accepted theory, or are you just it's based on science? Out? No. Yeah. So <laughs> in if, if the air is thinner, the there is less drag. Right. Which okay. Means the gotcha. rever- yeah. reverse swing is reduced. You see this a lot. I mean, like it's obviously something we know much more about because of baseball, but. And, and the various altitudes they play at there. But like when the air is thinner, it travels further. You can hit bigger sixes, but you also can't swing it as much. So it's like a, a double a double dent to bowlers. And I, I think, I'm not so Jeffrey Brummer relies on swing bowling here. Um, he's got other other tricks to his to his trade, and I'm sure he will be a, a factor in the game. Yeah. But um, I, I, I think he might be slightly less dominant than we have seen him in the three other tests. He's oh, I, I look... Series. I look forward to a juicy first session where England bat first and Jasper Brummer's well, four for six or five overs. I mean that that could that could definitely happen as well. But I I, I think um, you know the, 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 if it's like what we think, this was the test for Ollie Robinson to to play in and be really good. Yeah, and, yeah, and he's not going to be there. Um, for for a, for well, a variety of reasons. Uh, let's let's take a break, Max, and we'll get back in uh well then we'll come back and talk about ashwin and bearstow's 100th test you're listening to the cricket podcast welcome back everyone to the cricket podcast where we're talking india v england for a little bit and then we'll be moving on to some other world cricket news um max bearstow 100th test ashwin Mm. 100th test it's an extravaganza. Didn't wasn't Williamson's hundredth test, test this week as well? It's it's uh, and Tim Southey. Yes, like it's yeah. It's, there's a, a deluge of guys getting to a hundred tests. We'll talk about the Kiwis in a bit. Um, Bearstow and Ashwin, though, it's like the lifetime achievement award for Test cricket, isn't it? Getting to a hundredth test, I, I think. Um, one of them, you would probably say, has achieved a little bit more than the other in their their lifetime of achievement, though. Yeah, I mean, you can't take away Johnny Best and what he's achieved, can you? I mean, what a what what a player, the the, the greatest uh, wicketkeeper batsman ever to play the the sport. No, um, obviously being flippant, but it's. I think Johnny Bairstow is probably fair to say that he has benefited a little bit from being English and therefore playing loads and loads and loads of Test cricket. And if he'd played for South Africa, maybe he'd have played fifty because they only get to play two match series, and it's not very fair. But. Um, I I've been thinking about about this with with Besto, right? And I one of the many people who have chastised him for a bit of dodgy keeping here and there, you know, maybe not turning up, being unable to play a ball that is hitting off stump for about three years. And um, there's the other the other stat going around of you know Johnny Besto having the the lowest average and the fewest hundreds of anyone to play a hundred times in test cricket for for England but he's still <laughs> been incredible for England like he's had these fallow patches but for every one of those he's had these purple patches where he's done the unthinkable like that that game against New Zealand um when it was sort of the the advent I suppose of bad Baz ball and Ben Stokes was talking about the Johnny eyes and and the, the just the the zone that he went into and that's kind of part of what Johnny Bairstow is as a player, isn't it? He's just has these moments of being absolutely phenomenal. I mean, he's going to be an all, uh, probably an all-time great for England in terms of ODI cricket. Um, yeah. Pretty good T20 record as well. Um, and I, I think it's 
it's kind of he's suffered from a little bit of people expecting him to or pe him maybe expecting him to to do too much like he's desperate to have the gloves all the time i'm really sad if i don't get to be a wicketkeeper his record as a wicketkeeper batter averaging what 37 like that's pretty decent for a wicketkeeper who bats six in you know in your test side i mean that's not a bad record at all to have maintained over the course of 100 tests but there's this you know not necessarily an, an elite wicketkeeper you wonder maybe whether like if you, you focused on a on this on the batting or something that record would have been better and he'd have been more you know more more of an elite and people would have respected him I don't know a bit a bit more I just feel like I feel like he's been a little bit hard done by by trying to do too much if that makes sense but if you look at him as a as a as a cricketer he's phenomenal he's been phenomenal for England for ages and it's um it's going to be difficult to replace that and maintain the balance of of an England side right because I mean Harry Brook you'd think would come in and he could be a perfect guy to come and place Johnny Bairstow in the batting order but then you're going to have to pick someone else to keep wicket and in England, you know, I mean, overseas, Ben Folks makes sense, right? Harder to do, spinning, tracks, much more important. At home, Besto does the job well enough that he can have that level of batting and be a serviceable wicketkeeper, and it gives you a brilliant balance of your side. And that's something England are going to miss, and I think people might not realise that. What a classic case of you don't know what you've got till it's gone. You can you can malign him for the odd drop and whatever, and there's a lot of focus on him because of how good Ben Stoke Ben Folks is with the gloves. But when he's not there, I reckon we might come to a a point where people realise actually Johnny Bairstow was pretty special. And I can't believe it's that's a, that's where I've ended up. It's a re it's kind of a weird career, really. Um, yeah. In the I think a lot of what you said there is is right. Um, he's played 55 tests as a wicketkeeper. In those tests, average is 37.6 in an era where it's been hard to bat, like mm. that would put him right up there with wicketkeeper batters in in the era that he has has played in. Like that's that's exceptional. When he hasn't been keeper, it's thirty four point nine, so thirty five. Mm. Not great, not great, but also not awful. And I think sometimes because Bairstow is prone to you know brain fades and prone to getting out in quite ugly ways as well so you know obviously we've got the stumping from last summer and, and the, the, <laughs> the, 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 the 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 exhibit b if you like the ones we illustrate the out in ugly ways is that horror over he had against Akshar Patel where he just kept trying to sweep him was out off a no ball and then was bold and it's just it, it, you know he, and even in this series you've seen him do some things where you're like is that it, that, I don't think that's very clever. I don't think you've thought that through. And um, the intensity that he sort of plays with, the fact that he seems to take it so seriously, uh, I, th I think makes him a little bit of, figure, of a figure of fun. But I think, yeah, if you if you zoom out, what you're looking at there is a guy who had a pretty good career as a wicketkeeper batter. Um, wicketkeeper maybe not top tier, but batting batting wise for players in that position, yeah, really good. And and if you just just looked at the batting in isolation. It's probably about average for that period in in Test cricket. Like if you look at the bell curve of where batters in the top six fall in terms of their average, I I would guess it's more or less thirty six. And and what's his what's his career been? Um, and I, I say I say guess. I like I know it's about thirty six. Yeah. Like he, he yeah he <laughs> he's thirty six point four point four. Yeah. So of 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 um. You know, of of guys available for England, he was probably probably yeah. worth his selection mostly. Now, you see the high points, and this is this is where the weirdness comes in. You see the high points, and you can isolate them to basically two years. Twenty twenty two scores a thousand runs, an average of sixty six, striking at seventy six, and then twenty sixteen scores fourteen hundred, nearly fifteen hundred runs, uh, an average of fifty eight point eight. Um, and you you see that, and you think maybe there was a little bit more talent there. Maybe England mismanaged him in terms of roles. Maybe he couldn't figure it out, like you were saying. Maybe there was, there was you know something under the surface, because in every other year he's averaging sort of thirty, <laughs> like it is or less than 
Like his his he he be, he be he, there are there are more years where he averages below thirty than thirty if you take those out. Mm. Um, so it is a it is a weird career, but a hundred tests. I, I don't think you can really knock it that much. I think he's a pretty decent player, and um, I think I think you're probably right. I think Ingham will definitely miss him when he when he finally does hang up the spikes. Uh, Ashwin though, Max, um, mm. the other guy, India are definitely going to miss him, aren't they? Uh, I'm not saying he's about to retire, but um, yeah, he's probably not <clears> got an, another hundred tests. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hello. Like, we are in the sunset. Yeah, um, and uh, a contrast, I suppose, in that Ashwin has been heralded as a as a genius for pretty much his entire career. Um, so, what well, I mean, it's but it's it's well it's well deserved, isn't it? I mean, every time he goes away, he comes back with something different. He's got he's got the Karen ball. He's got the Sudoku ball. Where I don't, I don't know where he. he presents uh, presents the batter with a an un, unsolvable nine number conundrum that ends up with them falling over their feet it's um it's been it's been impressive and to boot he can bat like he's as i think we, we spoke about ashwin quite a lot when he took his um 500th wicket didn't we it's uh and nothing nothing's changed in those three weeks he's still phenomenal and um he's still always striving to improve and that's what's so impressive about him and again a guy that india are going to miss hugely when when he's not playing anymore because for um, you know for all of you know ways that you might be able to replace someone i don't, I don't know how you replace ravi ashwin like you look at who's coming through on the batting side for india and you're thinking of the people in pajara and rahane and rohit eventually that they're going to have to replace and you've got you know, Jaiswell, Jarrell, Safras Khan all looking like they could be very early stages, but, you know, very much step up and be that. On the Ashwin side, there's what? Washington Sundar? It's not. We ain't going to cut it. It's not the same, is it? Um, yeah, so he's he's phenomenal. Had a, a storied career. Probably could have been at 100 tests quite a lot earlier if he'd um, got a bit more of a, a go overseas. But at least he's going to get there finally, and um, you know what a what a player. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I'd, I'd again, I'd agree with all of that. I think particularly the point about constant improvement, and you see that a lot from the from this India Test team, like players getting better and learning new skills as as they get older and, and staying relevant. I mean, like it's a it's an achievement in itself to be playing international sport into your late 30s it's not mm. it's not really an old man i game. mean in <laughs> fairness he does chase he does chase the ball to the boundary like he's in his late 30s and well, i'll never tire of watching well, it this series well is... he <laughs> he is old but the 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 main skill the the bowling is is exceptional and obviously he can bat uh as well um i you do feel like he should have got to 100 tests sooner Mm. Um, and you can see you can see why India might not have picked him overseas all the time with with Jadeja able to play as a spin bowling all rounder. It does it does give them the freedom to go with more seamers in in some places. Um, but uh, yeah, I I I think the the numbers speak for themselves, don't they? Five hundred wickets in a hundred tests, like that's five wickets a match. That's really really good. If you're taking mm. four wickets a match, you're, you're pretty ex- pretty good. If you're taking five, you're exceptional. Um, and he hasn't has he managed to balance lefties v righties? Not quite. Is is he just ahead on right handers, which is a shame. It would be good if if in the last few years of his career he could maybe balance that out. Get it exactly fifty fifty. But it's you know <laughs> yeah. it's, it's it's the reverse of what it should be, isn't it? That's the that's the impressive point, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, Max, that's the guys doing 100th test. Should we take another quick break and then we'll come back and we've got um, a roundup of all the other cricket news? It's cricket news. 